Hey, have you heard? Four-Legged Life has a new digital newsletter. Here, let me show you how you get yourself subscribed. So you just type in Four-Legged Life, and that'll take you to the website. There we go. And this magic thing just appears, and you type in your email address. I'll use, let's see, how about coolest dog ever at gmail.com. <laughs> That's me. And then you just click on this uh, thing here. There you go. It's the new digital newsletter from Four Legged Life. Get subscribed today. Is the word getting out among your colleagues, Dr. Rob, veterinarians? Are they finally opening the door to integrative a little bit more? Or where, crystal ball, do you see mushrooms roll in health for our pets in the next five years? As far as integrative health, yes. More and more vet students are wanting classes and electives. Good. Health. I, I do some teaching at a couple of co- uh, veterinary schools, and this is primarily what they bring me in for is to Good. use these integrative concepts to the to the, the, the vet students themselves. In fact, last night I did a, a webinar on mushrooms for the vet students at Lincoln Memorial University in Tennessee. So I do so what's happening is that more veterinarians, as they're becoming introduced to the concept that mushrooms may not just be the poisonous things in the backyard that, that yeah. I'm into after the rainfall, but actually may have a benefit in terms of helping their patients who may not be responding as well as they would want them to, because they've got such complicated chronic diseases. So yes, and so I'm I've I've been speaking widely to veterinary conferences. Joni and I offer lunch and learns in which we nice virtually into the clinic and we we talk about the mushrooms. We buy them lunch, you know, and and so we've got a cat. Are there mushrooms on the plate? If we well, I think generally not, but I think that no. it, <laughs> it's, it's on the it, location. Yeah. I guess it's a pizza or something, maybe or you know, or but anyway. So no, and so veterinarians are opening up more and more. There was a study that was published in 2012, and then a follow-up study in 2022 using turkey tail oh. to, uh, to treat hemangiosarcoma, which is that terrible splint. Yes dogs get, and they were able to get some positive results. And so that got everybody's attention and, and, and increased the use of turkey tail substantially for cancer in, in dogs and cats. So, you know, we're looking for, you know, we're looking for more studies. We need more studies. I'm hopeful that, that working with real mushrooms, that we'll be able to get some studies funded. That'll be very important to veterinarians. There's some things that are interesting, like you asked about different you know, different mushrooms and what do they do? Like one, right. one study I'm working on right now with a couple of equine vets is the effect of the cordyceps mushroom on an endocrine disease, a hormonal disease that, that horses get called Cushing's disease. But dogs get oh. so we may yeah, want they to do. add it in dogs. But cordyceps also has the ability to, to um, protect the kidneys. And so I'm also looking at getting a study started in kitty cats and starting them with cordyceps. Thank you. And seeing if one, if we can modify the disease if they're diagnosed with it, or two, can we use it preventatively and reduce the incidence before it even begins? Because I'd much rather treat something before it becomes a disease, you know, than dealing with end stage issues, you know, with a disease. So, and there's, I well, and let me, let me jump in because people are tuning in, have cats, dogs, and other critters. We have people all over the world tuning in. And that is kind of the kiss of death for the senior kitties. And I have an 18-year-old cat, Mikey, and a 14-year-old cat, Baxter. And I always worry about their kidneys, making sure they get enough, you know, hydration. We've got a pet fountain that they love. You know, we have organic bone broth, no salt we're trying to give them. I think as pet parents, I think you've got a whole bunch of people coming up now that are going to be looking to people like you're, and the real mushroom groups and saying, what can I do in addition to their required vaccinations or whatever to do the best for their bodies? We're getting close to the end and I do want to see if there's some parting messages both of you had. And I I know we'll have to have you back on both of you, but because I went to Global Pet Expo, I've been to Super Zoo, every other table, it seems like a CBD oil and medicinal marijuana. I'm kind of uh, from a newspaper reporter investigative for 20 years. If your mother tells you she loves you, check it out. And my feeling is I would trust somebody like a Rob Silver. 
mm-hmm. with uh, medicinal marijuana than some company that doesn't have the the history of uh, research that you have. So there's a lot of uh, little dangers that you need to dodge, right, there Dr. Are. Ronald? Well, yes, and yes. I would say I would not recommend medicinal marijuana for a pet because medicinal marijuana contains THC. THC. Okay. And dogs are extremely <laughs> Cats less so, but why take that chance? But what we're really talking about is the non-psychoactive part of the cannabis plant, which is so valuable and so healthy. We're talking about the CBD. We're talking about okay. G, which is new, CBDA, the acidic cannabinoids, all of these CBN. And, and of course, the cannabis has more than just those. It has terpenes as well. And terpenes. Right. That the smell and the odor, but they also are have you know biological activity. Mushrooms have terpenes as well, and that's one cause for mushrooms' activity as well as the terpenes are very powerful molecules. What's your final message you want to give out, Joni? I, I appreciate both of you being here today. We're just skimming the surface. I guess my final message would be that don't wait until your pet is older and, you know, and having issues to get started proactively, adding, adding healthy, whether it's adding healthy foods, you know, adding fresh Mm -hmm. foods to the bowl, adding mushrooms, any kind of supplementation, you know, it's just, it's just like us, we live in a world where there's so many toxins, etc, that we all need a little extra and our pets too. And, you know, mushrooms are a great option for that daily proactive product, but do something, don't wait don't wait till it's too late because the wheels start to come off the bus before you start seeing I know. it. I know. I agree with you. Every day I'm with my furry Brady bunch. I'm a happy, happy camper because yep. they all make me a better human. So honored to have on our show today, Dr. Rob Silver and Joni Camlet. They're with the real mushrooms. They do so much in the pet world and beyond that you're going to be amazed that they even take a cat nap maybe once in a while. I don't know. I don't think they sleep, but we'll dive into that the next time they come because we've just skimmed the surface of some knowledge that they've shared with us. Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with all of our Four-Legged Life content. Four-legged life. Four-legged life.